Hi guys, I'm Exact Chaos and welcome back to another episode of Transport Planner Says. In today's episode, we are going to have a look at intersection control. And yes, what is intersection control? It's exactly that, how you control various types of intersections. So, firstly, maybe what it does. Intersection control, because um, in all road networks you have conflict points, right? You've got uh, multiple roads crossing one, one another in various locations. You need to identify a way, a set of rules in which people know how to interact with one another. Uh, is it these guys that's going to go or those or, you know, how do you do, how do you handle it when you arrive there and there's a conflict or not a conflict, all those kind of things. And that's what inter intersection control um, effectively is. The purpose for intersection control in reality is to ensure that um, traffic is uh, kind of flowing effectively, but it's also to make sure that things are safe. If people are speeding along on one road and the other road just does what they want, that ultimately ends up in an accident. So that's really the kind of purpose behind signal control. In uh, the wider context of city planning and city skylines, apart from those safety concerns, it is to maintain a proper flow of traffic in your city. Make sure that all of the roads work together. If you've looked at some of the other uh, episodes that I've talked about, there's a, a, hierar a hierarchy, <laughs> hierarchy of roads. Intersection control works um, hand in hand with that hierarchy. Okay, so let's quickly talk about what kind of signal control you have. And um, actually, maybe let's before we do that, let's talk about vanilla city skylines versus the mods. So as you can see, I've got Traffic Manager President Edition up here, up and running, and that is a very good mod for doing proper intersection control. But in the, if you're playing the vanilla game, let's say you do a standard intersection like that, you will see that that is effectively uncontrolled. And... Yes, that means that whoever gets there just kind of goes. And if you go to a pretty busy part of town, maybe something like this, maybe not too busy, something like this, you see that effectively op operates non-controlled. People just kind of drive through there and maybe kind of just slow down as people people uh, inter interact with one another. In, in reality, that doesn't really exist. Until we get probably driverless cars where we can take intersection control off the table completely and the cars knows what to do, um, even if it is unsigned, like a situation like this where it is unsigned, it does mean something in certain parts of the world. So in most parts of the world, an unsigned intersection like this would probably be a stop control or a yield control. Uh, it depends on where you're from really but really all intersections are controlled in one way or another whether it is by sign or just implied it is some level of control so if you're using vanilla then you're doing a standard intersection like this and it is not controlled but ultimately it's maybe some form of yield control um, and if you're doing a boulevard crossing a normal street like this it automatically turns into a signal control like that over there you can see signal control right there okay so that automatically turns this into a signal um that is basically it in terms of in terms of vanilla okay so when you use mods like traffic manager president you can add a wide variety of real more realistic um intersection controls and let's quickly talk about those. So uncontrolled, I've just kind of mentioned that really doesn't exist in reality. And it implies, even if it's not controlled, it implies some, some form of control in today's world. So the next step is yield control. Okay, so yield control is something where you have basically got, um, it's a slowdown only. That's what it means. So this is a yield control uh, intersection and that's kind of priority right there. So if you're talking about yield control, you would typically use this where a minor road or a minor flow of traffic in the case like this, you can also use the same thing, right? Let me just switch that on and say, uh, we'll do that. So that's a yield control as well. And you can also yield everybody, make everybody slow down, but that's effectively how it operates um, without signal control. It operates something like, I mean, without intersection control, it would operate something like this. So if we do something like that, for instance, this is um, where we're saying that this is a major flow of traffic 
not, not a major flow, but maybe a bigger flow of traffic than what is on this road. And so you would like to prioritize that and oppose these, but still they're fairly similar in terms of flow. So you would like these guys not to be stopped completely by these guys and just they're just looking for a gap. But ultimately these guys go first. OK, so that's yield control, right? When you then look at um, stop control, stop control is really used where you've got a major movement. Sorry, a major movement that crosses a, a much, a much smaller movement. So you really want to prioritize this. This is typically something like a boulevard, a multi-lane road, anything like that, um, where you've got lots of traffic on that. And you really don't want these guys to be messing with the flow on this road. Then you have a stop control. So what the stop control means in the reality it does. And in the game, it means that regardless of whether there's traffic on the other road, on the opposing road, you would still stop and and wait until there's a gap and then you would go. You wouldn't just take the gap um, if you see it. So you would stop anyway. So this um, in real world, it's also used in situations where safety doesn't permit you to just take the gap. So where um, maybe your sight viewing angle is not good. So if there was something built up to the edge over here and you can't see long distance across the corner whether there's a car coming or not it would be a stop control so you come up to the line and then you can observe and then you can go so that's that's just how it works in reality um, then if we're looking at priority this is also called the right of way you wouldn't typically see these signs um, up out on the street they're just basically implied usually by the absence of a sign OK, they are only really so uh, I've only really seen them where an intersection is a little bit more confusing and it wouldn't be immediately evident to you whose um, right of way it is or who has priority at the intersection. Then you would use the right of way. But basically you would want to use right of way signs or priority signs like this on all of your major flows where you don't want them to be disrupted by side flows. So if you're talking major arterials that travel all the way through your city, you would either have that on signal or you would have that just uh, as priority control uh, like this. So you just kind of run straight through. So that's basically it. Then the next one up is obviously signal control. And so signal control is really best suited where you've got um, where you've got major flows crossing major flows. So this is the vanilla approach to it. But really, in a, in a real world situation, um, signal control is better suited to to situations like like this, where you've got major flows um, crossing major flows of traffic like that. That is where a signal is most appropriate. You uh, unnecessary use of a lot of signals. Um, does it can get quite inefficient and if you've got a lot of them together you would see the whole thing almost grinds to a halt so the way vanilla works if you've got a, a, a boulevard like this and you're crossing it constantly with with small streets you will have signal 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 so let me demonstrate what i mean by that so if you're playing vanilla and you've got a nice grid pattern Okay, a nice, uh, well, that's maybe a little tiny, but maybe if you've got a bit of a bigger grid pattern like that, okay, what you find very quickly is that this goes from being a priority road to actually the road where all the stopping occurs, because then you pr probably maybe have longer blocks over here. So it's almost easier to travel along this road than it is to travel along that road. And so this is a mistake that I see a lot of people make when they're playing this game is they've just got signal, 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 signal on a, on a road where they really want the road to have the priority. OK, so really what um, a more appropriate. Well, this is because they're spaced the way they are they, it's a bit of a struggle but a more appropriate a, a approach here would be to actually take out those signals but then obviously it's not quite a safe setup then so then what you would want to do is you would just want to make sure that these guys kind of get the priority oops like that like that and like that so that would effectively mean that this road would keep going. OK, in most cases, it's just the left turn that becomes a bit of a problem in a situation like this. But it will keep going and these guys would stop 
you would also even do that. You could also even do that, especially on, on some of the smaller movements. But yeah, something like that is also pretty good. So that means that this road will keep going. If, if you find that this road is being disrupted, if you use um, the yield controls, just switch them over to the stop control. That's, that's basically it. So that's, that's kind of how you do it. And you want to make sure that when you use signals, you do it effectively. Then we can go on into stuff like time, traffic lights and things like that. So if you've got a really small road, you would also typically use a stop control. Um, because it's slower for vehicles to get out of that road into this road, you would want them to have a sufficient gap in traffic before they pull in. Uh, and that's why stop control is a little bit more appropriate on, on, on really small, smaller roads like this. So it's the same kind of situation. What you've got over here is a very similar situation to what I'm trying to indicate right over here. A small road, a slower road as compared to a higher speed road and a bigger road, you would want stop so that these guys don't disrupt the flow of traffic when they turn in. Okay, so let's look at a few custom situations where, um, where uh, intersection control can be used. Uh, obviously using mods the non non standard kind of way so as you will see what i've done over here i've got a pretty big road okay that's a signal control so nothing over there but what i've done is i've provided a right turn slip lane to allow these right turning traffic because that's a quite a high volume to not go through the intersection there. So I've got them effectively getting a bit of a free flow movement over here. But on the other hand, I also don't want them to um, disrupt this flow of traffic. So what I've given them is a yield control with a priority control on the main line. I've got a bit of a U-turn allowed over here. So in the reality, you wouldn't typically find this kind of thing, but we needed this because there's a lot of traffic wanting to go that way. So I'm allowing the U-turn, but in order for it to be safe, and I don't want to disrupt this flow of traffic, it's a yield control. So they will effectively wait for these traffic to go through. So this is a custom situation where I've used this. Okay, then we've got things like roundabouts. Let me move to my suburb over here. So roundabouts typically function as a priority control for people in the roundabout and a yield control for people trying to get into the roundabout. So always the people in the roundabout has the priority. Over here, you can see I'm applying the the minor road over the and and of the minor flow and the ma the ma more major flow. So the more major flow is getting the priority continuously moving, and then once there is a sufficient gap, this one will probably move, and then that one will also move once the gaps are there. See, so that's how it works. So that does allow a little bit of a queue to form over here from time to time but it keeps this movement flowing. And that is the purpose of a, 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 a intersection control like this. We can't just have people drive, drive all the way through. Okay, so again over here, we are trying to do a custom setup over here. I'm trying to maintain the priority on this road while this road over here is, uh, is, giving, is giving way or yielding to this movement. Yield also occurs for the left turn movement. So if there's a left turn movement and there is one coming from the front, then the left turn would also yield on this setup. So as you can see, we are getting a fair bit of a queue over here because this road is getting pretty busy. So this is one of those situations where you probably have a look at this and say, mm, maybe that's not quite what I want. And maybe we convert this to a signal control because the flows are matching a little closer. So that would mean that you would have some form of queuing happening on both sides but this is typically one of those where yeah the yield control is not working pretty well you don't go uncontrolled because that's just a mess okay look at that just the absolute mess stopping everybody and really so if you're struggling with traffic i find then and, and you're not too worried about the realism of something if you just take out all form of control like this and let everybody just do whatever they want um, then that does ease your traffic quite a bit. But really, in reality, this would be a signal control. So I believe this will allow this to function much better. What I don't like about the standard signal control here is the way it manages that left turn. Okay, the next part of the discussion um, relates to intersections on highways. So let's, let's talk about that. So a, a highway is effectively a free flow arrangement. And even if you get to interchanges, they are pretty much free flow right there. So how do you manage that intersection? The important thing with free flow is that you need every vehicle to have their own lane. So if we've got a two lane highway crossing through here, okay, so as you can see, I'm clicking on my 
uh, my control measures and I can't see any control measures. Why? Because every movement has their own lane. So really this guy doesn't have to worry about anybody on this road. They're just going to slip straight into their own lane. So that is how signal, con oh, well, signal control, intersection control works on highways where you have highway type arrangements, but you don't necessarily have a lane for everybody you would do something like a yield control. So what I'm basically saying over here is we've got this movement coming off of the highway. No need for a control over there. No one would be in conflict. And then they join one another over here. Uh, well, this road joins this road. And really this guy is at speed and you don't want them to back up onto the highway. So you would have a yield or a stop control on the more minor movement, even though they're the same kinds of roads. This is the more minor slower movement as compared to this one. Um, so you would have a priority movement right over there and this guy would have to stop. It's not a lot of traffic that's allowing them to stop, but just in general, that is the situation. So this guy keeps moving. And if there is a conflict that occurs between these guys, then that one would stop right there waiting for these guys to come by. Uh, and see, it doesn't always work. And that's why if you're finding that it's slowing down your main movement, you might switch over to a stop sign. So that won't happen anymore. So just in general, we as we still have kind of a highway type urban intersection movement over here, you would see again, I don't have control over here because everybody has their own movement. If everybody does not have their own movement, <clears throat> like where, for instance, like over here, this is this is not how you would do it. OK, but so if everybody does not have their own movement, you would want these guys to stop. And really, this one should be a stop control just to make sure that it actually is safe at this kind of arrangement, because these guys come along pretty quickly and you don't want um, these guys slipping in to disrupt the flow of traffic. But again, that's more of a realism thing than because that's probably going to hurt your traffic flow in general in the game. Same thing over here. We've got one lane feeding into two lanes. So there has to be some form of control. You can't just let them go. So these guys from the more minor movement kind of yields to the guys on the more major movement. Then you've got a, another custom uh, arrangement, which is typically in things like roundabouts. So in the roundabouts, you do have the option to also use um, things like ramp meters on, on, on highways, but also just if you if you have a big flow on a on a roundabout that you need to manage better than others, you would try and signalize that to make sure that everybody actually gets a turn onto that. But really, when it comes down to too many high flows on a roundabout, it's probably best to just take out the roundabout and make this a proper intersection with signal control. Um, because that's really going to be more effective than than what you've got going on over here. This doesn't actually work. It's just too many big flows. There's a big flow from here. There's a big flow from there and a big flow from there. So that is intersection control. I hope uh, I helped you a little bit in terms of understanding how to more effectively get your vehicles to move. So that is kind of how you make sure that your main movements continues to flow and doesn't get stuck in traffic. OK, so just making sure that you're using the right form of intersection control is a good first stab at solving your traffic problems. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed if you're enjoying the Transport Planner Says series, please leave a like and a comment. Tell me what you think. What do you want to know about the transport network and getting a more effective um, traffic network and, and flowing traffic in your cities is just in general? Tell me about about what you know, have you have questions? How are you using your intersection control? Um, are you using the uh, traffic manager president edition mod or any other kind of mod? Um, or are you just going with vanilla? So I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.